your bio is the equivalent of like your packaging. It's like a wrapper, right, for a candy bar. Your expertise is the candy bar itself. That is the thing that people ultimately are after. The packaging is as important as the product. What kind of bio do you need to have in order to help you sell? And how do you write that bio? How do you write the perfect bio, the bio that makes you look like an expert, the bio that attracts the right prospects and customers for your business, and the kind of bio that makes people feel comfortable to hire you? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Hi there, I'm Rory Vaden, co-founder of Brand Builders Group, Hall of Fame speaker, and New York Times bestselling author of Take the Stairs. There are four parts of writing a great bio, and that's what we're gonna talk about. Four parts of writing the kind of bio that would get people to buy from you, because that's what we're after here, is how do you write the kind of bio that would get people to buy from you? And I am shocked after working with hundreds of clients. We've had over 600 clients at this point at Brand Builders Group who struggle to find the words they need to describe who they are and, and what they do. And some of it is because we are humble, right? And that, I would say, is the very first part of this, is you have to be confident. People mistake humility and confidence all the time. People mistake the relationship between humility and confidence. Being humble has nothing to do with not being confident. Being humble means that you're willing to accept feedback, you're willing to admit you're wrong, you're open to the idea of reproof, or you're open to the idea of correction. That's what being humble it means. You can be totally humble and still be supremely confident. And when it comes to your bio, you have to be supremely confident. Why? Because the, your bio is the equivalent of like your packaging. It's like a wrapper, right, a, a, for a candy bar. There, there is, your expertise is the candy bar itself. That is the part that makes it real and substantive and, and tasty, right? Like that is the thing that people ultimately are after. But your bio is the wrapper, it's the packaging. And in any type of consumer packaged goods, they'll teach you that the packaging is as important as the product. And so if you have great expertise, if you have deep expertise, if you have profound wisdom and knowledge, but you have a terrible bio, it makes it really hard for people to buy from you. And it makes it really hard for you to impact people and to change lives because they can't see that you are an expert. They can't get past the idea of of being able to differentiate you from other people who are in the market. So that's the mindset, first of all, is you can be totally humble and extremely confident at the same time. And when it comes to writing your bio, this is a place where you are confident. You're demonstrating your expertise. You're telling the world how you have earned the right to talk about this. You'll notice how when I started this video, I introduced myself as the co-founder of Brand Builders Group. So my wife and I are eight-figure entrepreneurs. I am a Hall of Fame speaker. In fact, I am the youngest American in history to be inducted into the Professional Speaking Hall of Fame. And I'm a New York Times bestselling author, which I became at 29 years old. So when you talk about personal branding, right, this is something that I, my wife, our team, we know something about this. We have a track record, and that's one of the reasons why we talk about it. So what are the four components of a, creating a bio that will cause people to buy from you? The very first one is super easy. It is super simple. It is a concept that we call drafting. Now, another term for drafting is just third-party testimonials, or it is third-party credibility. In fact, one of the things that we released was we did a, a national research study called the Trends in Personal Branding National Research Study, where we asked the, the population, this was a US, uh, was a, this was a study weighted to the US census, so it's weighted to the American population, but we listed out several criteria and said, what 
is the most influential component of a person's bio that would cause you to buy. And we asked them questions like, or we gave them options like they have a blog, they have done a TED talk, they uh, have a large social media following, they have a big YouTube channel, they are a New York Times bestselling author, they're a self-published author. Uh, we asked all of these different things. And the number one most important characteristic out of all of them was that they had testimonials from other customers. That was it. That was the number one most persuasive piece of a person's history. Not how many millions of followers that they had, not how many visitors they get on their, on their website every month, not how many views they get on their channel, but testimonials from past clients. And you may not have any followers on social media. You might not have any subscribers to your YouTube channel. You might not have a, a, a big public perception of your personal brand. But if you're a real expert, there's a good chance that you have quality testimonials, that you have customers that have had a great experience with you. And that is the number one piece that needs to be reflected in your marketing according to data. By the way, if you'd like a copy of our full research study, just leave a comment uh, on this video down below and we'll have somebody reach out to you and send you a full, for free, uh, a full copy of our Trends in Personal Branding National Research Study and you can, you can check that out. There's a whole bunch of other insights there. But when it comes to constructing your bio, what you wanna do is you wanna include the names of either people or companies that you have worked with. So when I write my bio as a speaker, one of the things that will be on there, or if you go to my speaking website or you look at my press kit that we use to, to help me get more speaking gigs, it lists the companies that I've worked with the logos and the names of very reputable and recognizable firms. Why? Because I'm drafting off of their trust. They may not have ever heard of me, but when they know that Rory keynoted for Northwestern Mutual's national meeting of all of their top producers, that carries weight because even though they've never heard of me, they've heard of this other organization. And so I'm drafting off of the credibility of the other organization. Now, if you don't work with companies, if you're in a B2C model, then you can include the names of some of your more recognizable clients, if you have them, right? So one of our first clients at Brand Builders Group was Lewis Howes. Uh, he has a huge podcast. We've worked with Ed Milet. We have worked with Lovey Ajayi Jones. We've worked with several different New York Times bestselling authors, Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank, Julie Solomon, who's got a huge podcast. And we've got a lot of clients that have hired us to help them with their personal brand. And so if, if I were trying to sell myself in that way, I would include those names. You should do the same thing. That's called drafting. By the way, if you're a podcast host, or if you're a blogger, or if you have some type of a show on YouTube and you're trying to get guests for it, you should include the names of the other guests that you've had. Why? You're drafting off of their credibility in the same way that race cars draft off the car in front of them. You're, you're drawing power and energy from what's going on around you. You're not faking, you're not lying, you're not name dropping, you're legitimately sharing the caliber of the type of companies and people that you have worked with. That should be in your bio, not because it's bragging on you, but because it gives the other person confidence that you can be trusted. Because other trusted brands or other trusted names, other trusted parties have trusted you. So make sure you have at least one line in your bio that shares the names of either the companies or the individuals that you've worked with. And if you don't have famous clients, just share the types of people. Rory has worked with dozens of sales managers across the country or is known widely among homeschooling moms or you know, is a industry leading accountant. Reference, reference the, the volume of people that you have worked with. Right? We'll talk about that more later. The second thing that a great bio should have, at least a, the second thing that a bio that will cause people to buy from you should have, is you should use the principle of greatest common denominator. Now you might remember from freshman algebra, what is the, the, the concept of, of greatest common denominator? Well, here in this case, it just means 
share the names of the most reputable firms or the most reputable clients that you have worked with and drop off everybody else. And not just with the, the, the names of the clients that you've worked with, but of everything that you have done. Speak about your experience. Speak about your education in terms of the greatest common denominator. For example, let's say that you have been featured on Forbes and Entrepreneur Magazine and then your like local chamber of commerce, right? And maybe you had these write-ups. You wouldn't list all three of them. Just list the greatest common denominator and drop off the other ones. So what you're looking for is the highest level of reputation, the highest level of trust. Why? Not because you're being misleading whatsoever. You are going to stay 100% in alignment with your authenticity and in integrity here. But what happens typically is people will automatically fill in information that isn't there. If I tell you I've been featured in Good Morning America and Fox News, you automatically assume that every other media platform at that level has featured me or that I tend to be featured in media platforms like that. The fact that I've been featured in my Frederick High School uh, you know, newspaper makes no difference to you. I'm not gonna list that even though my very first media appearances were in the, the Longmont Times call and like all of these local newspapers and that was sort of how I got my start and how most of our clients do. The point is, show the best and forget the rest. Highlight the best parts. And, and, and this is a kind of a process of narrowing or expanding and, and zoning in. We sometimes call this portrait view versus panoramic view. What you wanna do is you wanna use portrait view on the things that are really impressive, like you're zooming in on portrait view, and then you wanna use panoramic view, which is sort of like wide, broad, sweeping kind of view on the things that maybe you don't wanna put as much detail to. For example, if you went to Harvard or Yale or Stanford, you wanna use portrait view on that. You wanna make sure that that's in your bio. You're zooming in on that piece. You wanna make sure that people don't miss it. But if you maybe went to a lesser known college, right? Or maybe you never went to college, you would use panoramic view. You would just say is highly educated or is professionally trained. You could use something like that. Or you would say, uh, Rory has a master's degree in blank or has a degree in the topic, but you might leave out the school. Now, in my case, I went to the University of Denver. I usually don't zoom in on it. I'm not, it's not like I'm hiding it, but I will share that, hey, I got a master's degree when I was 23 years old. So that part I might zoom in on, but the school itself, maybe, maybe not. It just depends. So that would apply for anything. The number of uh, co clients you've worked with, how many years you've been in the business, where you went to school, uh, how notable your clients are, how big your company is. Portrait view versus panoramic view is an example of working in the greatest common denominator. Show the best, forget the rest. If you're liking this so far, like if this has been valuable, what I need you to do is I need you to just hit the like button down below this video just so that I know and so that other people know that this video is worth watching. So uh, would you take a second to just do that? Like if you're enjoying this, hit like. Uh, if you're loving this, hit subscribe uh, because we've got lots and lots of videos uh, that we've made and that are coming your way with this kind of you know, practical knowledge to help you build a better business for your personal brand. So hit like or hit subscribe. And with that, I wanna share with you my third tip. The third tip to creating a great bio that causes people uh, to buy from you is to talk about problems and pain. To talk about problems and pain. Now what most people do when they write anything that is marketing related is they talk about the, the benefits, which is not bad. They talk about you know what they do. Um, but what they miss out on is a description of the problems they solve and specifically the pain that it causes for people. So if you don't have a, a lot of experience or you don't have a lot of famous companies that you've worked with or notable clients of, of repute, right? Like if you don't have clients that people have ever heard of or you're newer, what you wanna do is use portrait view on the problems and the pain. So what are problems? Problems are the things that people struggle with. So when you're creating 
you know, your marketing material, your collateral, in this case, your bio, you want to clearly demonstrate that you understand the problems that your audience faces just by saying it. So you'll, you'll introduce the problem to them, but then you also want to use pain descriptions. Now, how do you write pain? Pain is actually very, very simple. To write good pain copy, you know, to find the, to find the right words that describe someone's pain, all you need to do is this. Describe a day in their life as it exists now because of the absence of your solution. Describe a day in their life as it exists now because of the absence of your solution. So all you have to do is think to yourself, the person that I'm trying to reach, the person that I'm trying to get to buy something from me or follow me or engage, whatever your bio is being used for, think about that person's daily life and then describe it with pain. So for example, at Brand Builders Group, one of the problems that we help people overcome is obscurity, to be unclear, untrusted, or unknown, right? They're struggling with obscurity. They're wanting to be more well-known, to be more trusted, or to, to make more impact often in the world. So that's the problem. But what is the pain of that problem? The, uh, another word for pain would be the symptoms of that problem, is I would describe their life as it exists today because of the absence of our solution. So I'll say, you know that you're struggling with obscurity if you really struggle to tell people what you do in a few short words. You, you, you know that you're struggling with obscurity if you're spending all of this time fragmented and distracted across a whole bunch of social media platforms and none of them seem like they're growing. If you feel like you're having to make all of your, out, all of your business development happens from outbound and having to like push and fight and force and prospect and, and, and broadcast and nothing is inbound, that's how you know you're struggling with obscurity. If you're not getting the fees that you know that you deserve, you're struggling with obscurity. If you look at other people in your space and you see other people getting traction and making money and it's frustrating to you because you go, I should be that person. I know more than that person. I've got better content or information or experience or expertise than that person. You know you're struggling with obscurity, right? So see, what I did there is, is you wouldn't include all of those in your bio, but those are all examples of pain statements. They are symptoms of the problem. I'm describing their life as it exists today because of the absence of our solution. So if your bio, let's say you're maybe younger in your career, or maybe you just started a new career, and maybe you don't have the academic uh, you know, credentials, or you don't have as much of a track record yet to include in your bio then what I would do is I would spend more time in your bio talking about problems and pain. You'd say, uh, Rory is an expert in personal branding. He helps sm small business owners or he helps service-based business owners or he helps coaches and consultants and speakers and authors and professional service providers who are struggling to reach more people online. He helps them do that. So you would tailor your, tailor your bio to the problems and the pain that you help people solve. Finally, the fourth part of a great bio is to include quantity. One of the easiest, simplest, and most tactical ways to immediately enhance your credibility is to speak in terms of volume, speak in terms of quantity, right? Because you might say, oh, well, I've only been in this industry for two years. But what you could say is, you know, Sally has spent hundreds of hours or thousands of hours or has been, has been through uh, some of the world's elite training, right? Maybe you've gone through certification training and video courses, or maybe there's been some professional academic certification you have or, a, or an actual degree from college or university is you can talk about the hours of education you've gone through, the hours of certif certification, the hours of on the job training. Another thing you can talk about is the volume of the people that you reach, the volume of people that you have seen. Let's say uh, we do this with young podcast um, hosts, right? Is, is we could say they might only get a few thousand, maybe they get a few hundred downloads per episode if they just started, but if they've done 10 or 20 episodes or 50 episodes, they're reaching tens of thousands of people. 
right? So you can say legitimately, ethically, completely honestly, and accurately that so-and-so's podcast reaches tens of thousands of people. You can probably say that with, uh, you know, if, if you're fairly active on Twitter, your tweets get seen by a lot of people or add up the total amount of video views that you have ever had. You might only get a few dozen views on any one video, but if you add up all the videos you've ever done, it could be hundreds of views, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of views. Use quantity in your bio. How many years have you spent studying this? How many hours have you spent studying this? How many clients have you worked with? How many impressions have there ever been of people reading your content or watching your content and total it all up? Quantity creates credibility. That is one simple tactic that you can do that you can introduce into your bio to immediately create more trust, more authenticity, more reputation without compromising any of your ethics or your morals or your values or your integrity. But you have to create a bio that's going to cause people to buy from you. You do that by drafting off of the trust of other people that you've worked with, leveraging this third party validation of other people who say, by virtue of being associated with you, that you know what you're doing, that you are valuable, right? So you're drafting off other people's trust. You're also using the greatest common denominator. You're focusing in on the most impressive things and you're zooming out on the things that are, are maybe less impressive or, or in, more immature or underdeveloped. The third part of a great bio, right? Just to recap everything that we're talking about here, is whatever you lack in terms of credibility or experience, you can make up through clarifying the pain that you solve for people. So the lower amount of your credibility, the more you should spend time talking about the pain that you solve for people. Because people will automatically assume if you understand my pain, they will automatically assume that you can understand my problem and therefore you have the solution. When you can accurately describe a day in my life as it exists right now because of the absence of your solution, it automatically causes me to assume that you must have been there yourself or worked with people who have been there and so you must have a solution or a way out. And then finally, the fourth thing is quantity creates credibility. Look for opportunities to add numbers into your bio. As you do this, you will find that you can create a perfectly packaged bio in one paragraph, something that we refer to as the expert bio. A one paragraph description that is well crafted, that is custom tailored, that is uniquely positioned, a wrapper that wraps your expertise so that more people can buy from you. If you love this video and you've gotten value out of this, would you share this with somebody who needs to see it? Also, make sure that you hit subscribe so that you don't miss any of our trainings. And good luck to you creating the perfect expert bio that will cause people to buy from you.